In this lesson, we'll be taking a look at um, creating forms. And for this exercise, we'll be using the form wizard. Um, we'll be creating a series of videos on forms. First one will be on the form wizard. The uh, form wizard. The next one will be um, creating a form manually, and that's going to take us um, into several videos because uh, we'll be doing things by hand, which is uh, a little bit more involved. But then you get to understand um, how to set up a form to work with a table to do things like um, undo um, one level, undo that is, to revert changes made to data, and uh, to save your, ch your um, to save data um, changes made in a form back to the underlying database, which actually is automatically done for you by Foxpro. So a lot of the work is done for us. Uh, one of the key things that we need to bear in mind is that a form is an object. So right away, we're getting into object-oriented programming. So um, start uh, adjusting your mindset if, um, if you've not done anything with objects before. But you'll find that it's, it's pretty intuitive and easy to pick up in Visual Fox Pro. So to create a form, uh, let's uh, first, of, first off set our working uh, folder. Um, set default to, and I went ahead and created a, created a lesson two folder with um, the my table one copied there. And we next we go to tools. I select wizards. I look for the form wizard, and then from here I select the one that will allow me to work with a single table creates a data entry form from a single table. That's the first option. Second one says creates a data entry form from two related tables. And so we select option one, we'll click OK. And then it says which fields do you want to use on your form? Now first off we need to select a table. So this uh, column allows us to select databases and tables. We don't have any database open at the moment so we need to select a free table and the wizard automatically detected that and selected uh, the free table option here. And so I click on this button with the ellipsis to navigate to the table. I only have one table here in this folder. I double click. The table is listed in this list. Of course if I had uh, other tables I could go out and navigate to them um, but we won't be doing that for this exercise. All the fields or columns in the table are listed over here, available fields. And then I can select which of these fields I'd like. I can select one, two, three, four, or I could just select all if I wish to use all the fields on my form. Now we're creating a data entry form, so uh, we want the user to be able to enter data into all the fields. Um, in our earlier lessons, we saw when entering data, we did it manually. Actually, we entered data directly into the table. Now we'll be creating a form to give us a much uh, nicer, much more intuitive interface. So I click on the double arrow button to move all the fields at once over to the selected fields column. And then I click next. And then here I'm presented with a style. Choose form style. Which style do you want to use? And as I navigate the styles, you'll see a preview of what it will look like. So this is the embossed, boxed, shadowed, chiseled, and standard look. Standard reminds me of the old Fox Pro for Windows 2.6 days. Um, we'll go with the uh, standard embossed, which is a new standard for Windows apps. And button types, we could have picture buttons or uh, no buttons, or we could have custom buttons. I'm going to go with the text buttons so that when we're creating the manual form, um, you can see the, the similarities. So we go next here. And it says, how do you want to sort your records? Now, you can choose to sort the records, or you may choose not to sort the records. Uh, in this column are listed all the fields in the table, or any index that we may have created. And of course, our table would have had some indexes from previous lessons. So we could select F name, the F name tag, or the L name tag, or the last name plus first name tag, if we wish to use any. And, or we could, if we wanted to create a new tag, let's say if we wanted it ordered by date of birth, 
we could just simply select date of birth year and add the field and of course the wizard would create a new index for us so I'm going to leave that out I don't wish to order the table in any specific order uh, and so we'll go on to next and we're in the last screen of the wizard it says type a title for your form I'm going to name this data entry form 1 and it says now the options we have are rather save form for later use we can save and run the form or we can save the form and modify it in the form designer which is, is a nifty feature because there may be times when you wish to use the wizard just to get the, the form up and running very quickly and then you can use the form designer to customize the wizard generated form okay so we'll select save and run and we'll click we'll click finish okay so what we want to do here is to is to name give the form a name and we'll call this uh, my form number one and save and the form is run so this is our form running and of course it's reading from our table uh, which is not shown here um, actually um, here the form is probably using a date private data session which it is which is called form one I'll get into that later uh, we did talk about data sessions and this form is using a private data session so I don't see the table open here in the default data session but if I were to go to the forms data session each form can have its own data session uh, I would see the table open so let's go back to the default let's not mess with that right now and so the form handles its own data session which is uh, pretty cool okay now right off the bat let's see if I can make changes to the data here I can select with the cursor I can click on any field and they, they appear to be open but in fact they're not if I, if I type I get a message here I'm hearing beeps in my headphone uh, I'm not sure if you're hearing that on the recording it says the control is read only so I can't make changes without first clicking on the edit button and this or rather all this functionality is provided for you courtesy of the wizard so you don't have to worry about how to code for adding a new record to the table, editing records, deleting records, etc. Print is provided. There's a find uh, which, actually, which actually works like a filter. And we'll look at that in a minute. And then, of course, we have these navigation buttons here. Now, because I'm on the first record or the top record, top and previous are disabled because I can't go beyond the top of the record. Notice also that for the logical type in our table visual fox pro automatically selected a checkbox because a checkbox supports um, uh, two states there's on and off and um, it actually supports three but I'll get into that later okay so if you notice that the the labels that we have here match exactly the names of the columns that we have in our table and these uh, are text boxes if you work at VB, then you would be familiar with these. I won't get into this too much. I assume, I'll assume that you have some programming experience, and you know what a text box is. Okay, you know what a label is. You know what a checkbox is. So, getting back to these uh, navigational buttons. So we have navigation here, and then we have um, data manipulation or record manipulation here. And so I'm just going to navigate a bit. Notice as I click next, the, rec the, the data is updated in the form. So I go next. I'm on Randy Doom. Don't like that guy's name. Let's go back and edit edit the name. So we'll click edit here and all the buttons are disabled save for the save button and the uh, revert button. So I can't do anything else. So these are things that we'll look at how you can do this when we create the form manually. So these are all disabled except for save and and the uh, edit button, its caption was now changed to revert. 
So we'll look at how to do that as as well. So change this guy's name back to Bloom and uh, I'll click Save. And so now the changes are now committed to the disk, and I can then go on through the the record. Now let's say I was editing, and I modified uh, Mary's name and absentmindedly I wasn't uh, paying attention and my hand rest on the keyboard and I deleted the first name and add a, a bunch of blanks to the address I can uh, thankfully use the revert button to undo uh, these changes to the, the rec to the, to, the, to the data so far um, this is a one level undo so I have to make sure that I don't save because once I save I'm unable to undo it so I go and revert and I get my original data back so that's pretty cool so going down the list we can see those who like coffee and those and those who don't um, one of the things we can do in the in the form designer is to modify these uh, labels so they're more um, uh, user friendly. We can put a space there and then we can properly put uh, correct the spelling on this column and add an E to it. Um, we're going to add a new record. Click on add, we get a blank screen and I can type in my name Okay, and when I enter a two-digit year, FoxPro knows that, okay, based on the two digits that I wish for, um, it needs to put 19 before the two digits. If I did something like uh, 02 or 05, let's see what it would do. It knows to roll over to uh, the next century, 2000. So, okay, let's fix that, 1969. The date of birth, likes coffee, no. And then I save, and now we have a new record in the table. <coughs> know that that is the last record, next and bottom are disabled. I can also use the find feature to search for, um, let's see, we want James. We can make it case sensitive or case insensitive. insensitive. And uh, we're allowed to combine two conditions here using the operators and or or okay so we go search for James and it says no records were found which meet okay so we don't have a James in here hmm. okay let's go for last name and type B O N D bond and search so we don't have a James here we do have a Mary in here for the first name, so we change it to the first name, and we search. Of course, it's a single record, so all the navigational buttons are disabled, and I am placed on that record, um, Mary. And uh, so what it has done is placed a filter on my records, and we did look at filtering in an earlier lesson. I will clear the filter by saying all, and now I can use my navigational buttons to jump to and fro. I'll go to the bottom, and I'm going to delete this record. Uh, we're given a prompt, so we'll look at how to do that as well, and answer yes, and the record is removed from the table. Let's look at what the print gives us. So I don't think, because there are no printers installed by default, we're given the uh, Windows default printer, which is a Microsoft Office document image writer. So let's do a print, okay, and output put it on the desktop for now okay and we're given a simplified report let's magnify this 
which is basically a list of the data in the column. We'll look at a later lesson on how to create a, a more polished uh, report. So we'll close that, cancel out of this. And so we've looked at all the features um, generated by the form wizard. And we exit. And so next what we want to do in this lesson is to open the form in the form designer by typing modify selecting form and the name of the form my form one actually I type I won't use this because this is going to lesson one and I want the one in lesson two so I'll just type um, I'll put a question sign and uh, navigate to my form Okay, so the form is now open, and we have the properties window uh, showing the properties of the form, so form one, and all the properties and methods that are associated with it. We have uh, what's that? Six columns here. All, of course, shows all the fields. Sorry, all the properties and methods, and then the others simply categorize um, the options from all for quicker access. Um, so, if I want to see methods only, I go methods. Uh, layout um, layout properties. I select the layout, and they're listed here. Uh, there are others, and of course I can add stuff to my favorite with the with VFP9. This is new to VFP9. Okay, and so these are text box objects that are on the form. And notice as I click on each of these objects that the the property window shows them. So just as if you were using Visual Studio. Um, or you know the old um, VB6 or VB5 interface. Um, each um, object has properties which we can we can view, um, we can edit, or we can set to some specific value. These, of course, are, are called labels, and they're given names, automatic names by the by the wizard. LBL address one based on the name of the field. This itself is a label. This is a graphic object called a shape. And this is a composite object called a button set, which um, is created by the wizard. So all these are in here. Of course, I can right mouse click and edit this um, combined object and see all the objects that are in here. So within the button set, I have a top, preview, next. And these are all buttons and with their own set of properties. And so, for example, this is the Add button, and this is telling me that the on the click event for the Add button, uh, the code here was inherited. So if I double-click, I will not see the code because it was inherited. But if I click on this uh, View Parent Code, uh, it's like text button, I will see the code that is behind the Add button click. So when the Add button is click this is a code that runs it checks if the if it's in edit mode and if it's in edit mode it does an update row if not it adds a new record and then of course it does the um, enabling and disabling of the buttons as we saw before and of course it refreshes screen and do a whole bunch of stuff we will not get into that excessive detail uh, with ours not on the first run anyway but eventually we will um, look at how to do all those things when creating a form manually. So not much to show here because a bunch of stuff are inherited and I'm not ready to get into inheritance as yet. So that's where I'll stop for this segment of forms, forms lesson number one using the form wizard.